Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So, let's do it again. Try to imagine that you are in a bar, you are bored and would like to meet someone and maybe even make some friends, when suddenly you're seeing that the bartender was replaced by one of the visitors, a blue-eyed, golden-haired man with a neatly trimmed, well-groomed, short beard. He looks very attractive, even despite the long facial scar running from his hairline into his beard, as though a red-hot poker had been dragged across his face. Plucking up some courage, you wave in your hand to call him to you. When he comes closer, you see that he has a very sturdy and big body. The man comes to you with a fast, energetic gait and asks, What do you need? Well, he is definitely somewhat rude, you think, and introduce yourself to him. Samuel. You hear his response. Destroyer of hope. This sounds interesting. You suggest to Samuel to sit down next to you. You know how to make the forsaken start talking and very soon you already learn the real name of Samuel. Tell Janine Eileen Sar. You also learned that he received the scar during the Age of Legends from Liu Sterin Telamon. He specifically didn't allow no one to heal the scar, thus leaving it as a reminder to himself about his revenge to the Dragon Reborn. You also learned that Samuel received his nickname Destroyer of Hope after his betrayal at the Gates of Heaven, by leaving the gates open and leading the shadow into Rorn Mdoi and the heart of Satel. You know to him trying to look smart, uh, although in general you didn't understand nothing from these names. But the word betrayal can be interpreted widely, and you realize that most likely during the Age of Legends, Tel Janine Eileen Sar decided to betray the forces of light in some critical moment when he was needed to preserve the order. Suddenly, you realize that Samuel has the height of a medium man. This is unusual in the world of Robert Jordan, where each second man has the height of a professional basketball player. You draw attention of the Forsaken to his height, but very quickly regret about your words, as soon as you see how fiercely his eyes flashed at you. If you want, I can shorten you so quickly that I'll be a giant for you. The Forsaken proposes to you and after swallowing your saliva you quickly begin to refuse and apologize as politely as you can. You ask the Forsaken to tell his story about the Age of Legends. So, before the war, Tel Janine Eileen Sar was a world famous athlete, participating in a lot of competitions such as archery and bloodless sword fighting, in which he became a world champion. He was a friend of Liu Sterren Telamon, but he didn't tell you about how close was that friendship. When the war of power began, he discovered many other talents in himself, and very soon he became one of the best generals of Liu Sterren Telamon. The war changed him. He loved the honors and privileges accorded to him as one of the most famous and high-ranking generals. His greatest talent was in his ability to organize defense, while the War of the Shadow was mostly defensive. In the fourth year of the war, he suddenly switched to the side of the Shadow. Partly, it happened due to the fact that he became confident in the future victory of the Dark One. Despite his great abilities as a general, Samuel preferred to fight only when he was sure about his victory. Partly, it was also because he hated Liu Sterren, believing himself to be a much better general than the latter and more deserving of the supreme command given to the Dragon. Samuel believed that military achievements more preferable to devious political intrigues or diplomacy and therefore he preferred being a field commander than serving as a governor. Also he didn't respect the merits of the dragon in these areas at all and judged him only as a general. What a moron you thought to yourself but you of course only smile and give him a sign to continue. Samuel of course continues to brag and you just have to collect grains of truth from his story and make your own conclusions. So you understand that the people who lived in the territories under his rule always became crazy happy when they learned that he was about to leave. In addition to his usual atrocities, his reign was also marked by what might be called absent-minded cruelty. His lands always quickly degraded into such a terrible state that they could hardly support any military operations against the Shadow. Filth and hunger were common in the territories taken over by the Shadow. Their absence was unusual and the use of the force to maintain the health of the citizens did not take place at all. Where Samuel ruled, people died by thousands only because he didn't care about maintaining elementary sanitary standards and distribution of food. Samuel was reputed to be a lover of grandiose plans. The people and resources dedicated to specific purposes by any previous governor were inevitably drawn into his designs as soon as he took the rule. Unlike the civilian population, he showed some concern about the military forces under his command, humans and shadow spawn alike. They were treated well enough, although Samuel personally didn't take part in this. 
For him they were something like sports equipment, which must be monitored, so that in the future it doesn't let him down. But if the civilian population lived under his rule in terrible condition, then the captives suffered to a much greater extent. That is, those who didn't immediately fall into a Trolloc's cauldron were kept in prison with clearly insufficient amounts of water and food to sustain life, and often without it all. A case is known when Samuel, having learned that there is only half of the amount of the food that is necessary to sustain only half of the prisoners, simply ordered the other half to be executed immediately. And in this moment, you start to wonder, how do I get rid of this psycho? Otherwise, you never know, maybe there is not enough beer in the bar and he will simply kill you just not to share. Having come up with an excuse like, I'll go read a book, you going away from him. And now let's start already with the book. And the first time we mention Samuel is in the third book, The Dragon Reborn. We have Moraine, Lan, Perrin, Loyal and others follow Ran to Tyr. Along the way they fight with Shadow Spans and Loyal says that Samuel was a general during the Age of Legends. Moraine denies that the Grey Man was sent by Samuel, but claims that he sent Darkhounds. Moraine also learns that in Ilion, under the name of Lord Brand, is the destroyer of hope who rules. Let's move to book 4, Rand is attacked by his reflection in the mirror. He suspects Samuel, since he already knows that he rules in Ilion, but Moraine convincing him being wrong about this by telling him about the existence of bubbles of evil. She also argues with Rand. In her opinion, it is already time to confront the armies of Samuel in Ilion. A battle of the city of Tyr happens, Mordral and Trollocs fight each other, Rand and Moraine are sure that it was Samuel who sent them. For Rand, this is largely due to Lanfear, who appeared earlier and incited fear in Torrent about Samuel. Now in the fires of heaven we finally meet Samuel. Lanfear, Grendel and the Destroyer of Hope come to meet Ravin in his palace. They all fill themselves with one power to the brim, tense and distrustful to each other. Well, they are forsaken after all. But at the same time they are still able to do conversation with each other. Samuel is as usual soldierly straightforward and rude. Ishamel were completely mad, Samuel grumbled. There is little left of a man inside him. But actually there really was nothing left of him after meeting with Rand in the third book. Samuel is also surprised by the fact that Asmodian went over to the side of the dragon, because earlier Asmodian didn't show either courage or determination. We see that Samuel is dismissive of both Asmodian and Rand. He considers him to be an ignorant fool, an ordinary shepherd who doesn't even have 100 companions. The great lord of shadow will smear him like a fly. Lanfear then lays out her plan for exactly how to capture Rand. Samuel is very interested in it, because despite the fact that Rand is a shepherd and despite the fact that he is untrained, all the same Samuel won't poke his nose to the Dragon Reborn, until he is sure of 100% chance for victory. Meanwhile, Rand is returning from Ruidin. He was already recognized by the Aeil as a Karakarn when suddenly his camp being attacked by an army of the Dark One. Trollocs, Murdrals, Drakkars, Dark Friends, they all shout Samuel. Having smashed to smithereens another wave of the dark poop, Rand discusses the attack with Asmodian. Asmodian believes that in fact this wasn't Samuel who attacked them. Attackers shouted his name on purpose in order to lure Rand to attack Samuel and his city. Here Rand receives déjà vu and he literally speaks for a couple of seconds in the voice of Lewis Terran Telamon. It was Samuel. He's trying to lure me into attacking him, just like once at Serenhar. Rand and Asmodian are both shocked. Further, when Asmodian describes the appearance of all the Forsaken, Rand again recalls such things that an ordinary shepherd from two rivers shouldn't know. Like for example the fact that Samuel always wanted to become taller, and he was always very angry that the power can't help him do this. It turns out that in the world of Robert Jordan, there is also an own very good commander who isn't tall. Wow, so we have here in our world Napoleon complex and Jordan has Samuel complex. No, it's not Jordan has this complex, but in general, in this world. And once again another meeting of Ravin, Samuel, Lanfear, Grendel, Intel, Arandriot. Lanfear's plan is revealed, they deliberately luring Rand onto Samuel so that he would focus on him and when he come they'll meet him together connected by bonds with each other which will increase their power, enough to capture him alive. Samuel is very suspicious of the plan, he doesn't like the idea to play as bait. Moreover, these three, having united, can easily kill him after they capture Ran. Whether the Forsaken succeeded in persuading him we don't know yet, 
since we see the whole conversation through the eyes of Nynaeve and Birgitte, who have to retreat before the conversation is over. Let's move further on the story. During the fight for Karien against Shido, Rand and Avienda and Egwene strike with one power from a wooden tower. Suddenly, a strong blow of Sidin comes from the west. The tower collapses, many maidens die. Rand comes to his senses and he is sure that this was Samael. Rand is also certain that Samael is behind a series of alien pirate raids in Tyr and attacks on the plains of Moredo. At the end of the Fires of Heaven, Rand reveals his plan to Matt and tells him that he plans to kill Samuel. Matt tells his lover Melindra about this, however, it turns out that Melindra is a dark friend who serves one of the Forsaken. She tries to kill Matt but dies from his knife. Meanwhile, Mogirian tells Nynaeve that Samuel, Ravin, Lanfear and Grendel have joined to trick Rand into attacking Samuel. Nynaeve learns that Rand will face their all four Forsakens. At the beginning of the Lord of Chaos, Rand is already an Andor. After he killed Ravin there, he looks at the plains of Moredo, which is next to Ilion. He also asking the Ail intelligence if Samuel had more people and camps. Rand pretends to be building up power to attack Ilion and waiting for more troops. It's a trick that only Matt and Bashir know about except him. Next is the meeting of Samuel with Grendel. She tells him about a recent Forsaken gathering that Samuel didn't show up for. It turns out that Demondred had visited Shalgul and conveyed the words of the Dark One. Let the Lord of the Chaos rule. Samuel believes that he knows Grendel better than any other of the Chosen. After all, it was she who accompanied him to Shal Ghul when he went there to pay respect to the Great Lord. They discuss Ran and Samuel is being infuriated by the suggestion that the Dark One wants to give Althor a Niblis position. He suspects that someone from the Forsaken is helping Althor, otherwise he would have killed him already in tear by his Trollocs. But someone sent other Trollocs to Althor and rescued him. From Samarak POV, we learn that the second wave of Trollocs that attacked Samuel's Trollocs was sent precisely by her. She received an order from the Dark One and sent her army to the city of Tyr. And yet, despite his own intrigues, Samuel of course following the orders of the Dark One and tries to convince Rand that he does not pose a threat to him and even sends an ambassador to him with seemingly good intentions. But this bluff is not working, obviously. Rand is still rushing forward like a tank, gathering an army. So Grendel and Samuel also discuss the absence of other Forsaken who seem to be disappeared. Grendel assumes that Altor killed them all one by one. Samuel, of course, refuses to believe it. He still doesn't want to accept Rand is something more than just a shepherd. We jump forward on the story once more and see another meeting of Grendel with Samuel in Ilian. He manipulates her by saying that Rand agrees to a truce. Rand will kill everyone in the end and will remain alone with Samuel and then Samuel will kill Rand and become Niblis. Moreover, Samuel is sure that his manipulation is 100% working and he is already starting to speak with Grendel as if he already became Niblis and promises her that he will probably spare her. Grendel tells him about the deaths of Lanfear, Asmodian and possibly even Magirian. She also tells that Misana is in the White Tower. Samuel demands that she find everyone else. At the end of the sixth book, when Rand is being taken to the Tarvalon in a chest, the Aes Sedai meet with Sivana and the Shado Wise Ones. Sivana examines Rand, then everyone keep going on their ways. It turns out that Sivana has a small stone cube covered with intricate carving. The strange wetlander who gave it to her said that she will need to use this thing when Rand will be captured. But Sivana decided to throw the cube away and become the wife of the Karakarn himself. She believed that this is a way to force all Ail clans to bow before her. Now a crown of swords. Rand restores after the events of the Dumais Wells and plans an attack against Samuel. Beyond the plains of Moredo stands his huge army. The Tyrants, uh, Kyrenian, Ail who will strike Ilian, overcoming the resistance of the line of forts located on the Doilon Hills, located in Ilian, not far from the border. Rand hoping that as soon as his army strikes, Samuel will immediately appear at these forts. Then Samuel meets our old acquaintance, a dark friend White Clock, Jaehim Karidin. He gives them the order to search for objects of power and scares him almost to death by casually talking about the atrocities of Trollocs. Meanwhile, Sivana's wise ones are studying her cube. It's a summoner. By channeling the power, they summon two wetlanders, Kadar and Maisia. Kadar offers them a certain device to control Althor, but does not give it, since Sivana did not capture him yet. Also, Kadar promises them many cubes that will allow Shaido to do traveling without the use of the power to come into ritual lands. 
Kadar and Maisia are Samael and Grendel. After leaving Sivana, they take off their magic masquerade and they are spied by someone who is using one power, who learns about their plans. Samuel is going to scatter Shido warriors all over the wetlands, so they could plunder and create as much chaos as possible. Kadar, that is Samuel of course, gives Shido an oath road. He promised that when Shido will capture Altor, he will bring them means to control and contain him. Samuel also brought two bags filled with travel cubes. He says that Altor is going to attack Shido here and they need to travel into another place, otherwise they will be defeated by him. Shido walk into traveling gate and we learn that Samuel is actually fooling them. It was him who opened these gates and not the cubes, which are just cubes without any powers inside them. We have a little scene in which Shaidar Haran thinks about whether Samuel serves the chaos. And let's move on and the troops of Ran invade Ilian. Along the way they defeat Shido forces sent there by Samuel and Samuel has to fight the Ashamans. Meanwhile Rand wakes up after being stabbed by Padan Fane's knife and learns from Ashaman Adli that Samuel is currently destroying his army on the plains of Moredo. The whole elaborate plan to convince Samuel that it makes no sense for him to hole up inside Ilian because Rand is anywhere but with his army advancing on the city because of Padan Fane's knife. Two days during this time everyone who had eyes and ears in Kyrian and the Forsaken no doubt had them that the Dragon Reborn is on the verge of death. That's why Samuel left Ilian without any fear. So Rand, still reeling from his wound, is going to kill Samuel. He wants to save his army that Samuel currently tears to shreds. Rand gathers his men and a legion of Ashamans and opens a traveling gate right to the center of Ilian. Samuel returns to Ilian where he left the spell of small guardians reacting to the use of one power. And he has to confront Rand. Samuel with a voice amplified by power cries that Ilian belongs to him. It's his! and he challenges Rand to fight in another place. After that Samuel using one power to travel into Shadar Logos. There they have to fight again. Samuel prepared their many many traps for this fight. Guardian spells and Trollocs await there for our hero. Rand searches for Samuel and he's fighting his Trollocs and then he falls into a bottomless pit trap. Someone unknown saves Rand. They both run away from Mashadar, which of course was attracted by the battle. Both strike Mashadar using Balefire, their beams cross, which is very important. Rand learns that Samuel always liked to deal with people spectacularly, to defeat them publicly, and if there is no such possibility as now, then in some place memorable for a person. Rand goes to the gate at the square and notices Samuel there, who is hiding while waiting for Rand to fall into his trap. But Mashadar crawls on Samuel from behind, and that's it. The end of Samuel. Thank you for listening and watching this video about one of the best Forsaken there is, Samuel. Feel free to like and subscribe and as always, may the light shine upon you and have a great day.